God, yes, that's the good shit. We're talking Star Wars here. Pure, unadulterated, sleazy sci-fi goodness without any extraneous bullshit like midichlorians, resurrected emperors, or fucking Gungans. No, no, in Star Wars Outer Rim, you're playing as the scum and villainy of the Star Wars universe. And whether you're tracking down bounties as Boba Fett or playing a hand of Sabacc as Lando Calrissian, you won't stop flying, shooting, and gambling until you've become the most famous outlaw in the galaxy. One to four, low down, scruffy looking nerf herders can compete in the sandbox style race to 10 fame points, which you can get in a myriad of ways. And this is what's so fucking cool about Outer Rim. You ask yourself, what the hell do I do on my turn? You do whatever the hell you want to do on your turn. Want to hunt rebel patrols for fame and credits? You can. Want to dick around in space with your sweet Dajara collar table? Gambling with your crew for several turns? Probably a dumb idea, but you can. Want to make the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs? By the force, you can indeed. The game does give you a little direction. Like if you're playing as fan favorite IG-88, you know you want to get some droids as crew. You want to fight a lot of combats because you have a combat dice reroll ability. You want to be on the lookout for jobs that test strength and tech because you're skilled at strength and tech. You can have low risk planetary encounters at the beginning of the game because you have a neutral reputation with every faction. So get out there and get your Durasteel appendages dirty. Let's talk about the market for a bit because it's a very important part of Outer Rim. Because this is a fantasy flight game, there are of course going to be a shitload of cards. Cards. The six decks of cards in the market are where you will acquire weapons, ship mods, cargo, crew, jobs, bounties, new ships, and other lucrative opportunities for turning your opponents into bantha fodder. Oh. During the action step, you can buy one card from the top of one of the market decks. But before you do so, you can discard the top card of any one of the market decks to the bottom of its respective deck. This is useful not only to give yourself better options, but also to screw over your fellow players who are planning on snagging that easy to deliver illegal cargo for themselves. <laughs> Skill tests are another major part of this game, and hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for having crew and gear that give you a slight edge at rolling dice, especially if you're trying to complete a multi-part job card, which requires you to be good at several different skills. These are the most hateful dice I have ever rolled, so I like to round out my skills with reroll abilities or cards that let me turn one type of result to another. You can always win a skill test without any relevant skills, but the odds of doing so are- Never tell me the odds! One. I fucking love sandbox board games, and Outer Rim is no exception. This is the type of game where you're constantly gambling on what you think could happen in the future and making informed tactical decisions to hedge your bets. Mix in a little push your luck from the dice rolling and mwah. It's thematic as hell and it takes advantage of the vastness of the Star Wars universe to make your gameplay decisions feel like part of a much larger whole. Outer Rim is probably the most streamlined sandbox game I've played, meaning turns usually go nice and quick once everyone is familiar with the rules and that those rules are straightforward and easy to learn. And if you're not playing with anyone else, the solo mode is surprisingly robust and entertaining and manages to capture the spirit of multiplayer games with a minimal amount of extra fiddliness. I've got a few criticisms of Star Wars Outer Rim though. The biggest issue with the base game is that there's just not enough stuff in it. You will probably cycle through all of the cards in most of the market and encounter decks during a normal playthrough. And seeing repeats over the course of one game breaks the illusion of being in such an expansive setting. Fantasy Flight, why are so many of your games like this? Yes, the Unfinished Business expansion literally doubles the size of all the card decks as well as the number of playable characters, but it's another $45 on top of the base game, which already isn't cheap. If money isn't an issue, Outer Rim with the expansion is definitely the way to go, as it feels much more like a complete package, not to mention all the extra cool shit that it adds. Secondly, you have to love Star Wars to like this game. The theme is strong with this one. This is Star Wars for the nerds who know it from Alzac 3 to Zepho, from Akbar to Zuckus, from Kevin J. Anderson to Timothy Zahn. Yes, Han Solo and Chewbacca are in this, but so are more obscure characters like Boshek, Dengar, Dr. Afra. 
So if you don't want to wade through a bunch of references that only the people down at your local FLGS will recognize, you'll find the taste of Outer Rim to be as disagreeable as a glass of blue milk left out under the twin suns of Tatooine. <laughs> Lastly, this game is a meritrash as hell with all of its dice rolling, card flipping, and intermittent randomness. So if you're the type of gamer that needs every turn to be an exercise in optimal strategizing, you'll be happier going back to your well-worn shelf of beige. So does Star Wars Outer Rim belong in your collection? For me, unequivocally yes. It amiably sits in my collax next to other sandbox titles like Merchants and Marauders and the GOAT itself, Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. And it's snappier, easier to teach, and less fiddly than both of them. Even setting this game up gives me a warm glow. And each time I start playing Outer Rim, I'm as happy as a Deveronian with a full glass of Maranzane Gold and an ear full of jizz music. That's disgusting. Nobody calls it that. No, it's definitely jizz music.